Do you guys yeah. do the pop cards? We did the yes. pop cards. I got it down. This is actually the Alex Four with down. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it actually, it actually doubled. <laughs> this is take two out of forty. Uh, so this is uh, we we just graduated from Worlds. Uh, Oliver swept down at Worlds. Yeah. yeah it's a great player. Let's great. great. <laughs> great prison he, had, he had a great showing. Nine two, nine two until the last five rounds of blitz. Yeah, if they showed the standings after draft on day two, he would have been near the top. He was in top sixteen. He was in top they, 16. they showed they showed For the one blitz round. Happened, right? oh, blitz happened. What happened after that? Blitz. I lost every single round of blitz. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. He chose old him because he didn't want to think, and then he went against three Icelanders and how many? And Reiner. Two Reiners. Oh, I died in three turns. Should have played prison. You, you, you live in the nightmare that everybody at Worlds. Had before going, I'm gonna yeah. do well and then just completely I mean, scrub out of it. I didn't expect to do well in Blitz because I never actually played the format. Yeah. I always run the events. So it's like, no, it was just, it was just like blitz two months ago. Yeah. 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 Anyway, we're joined here by three gentlemen who will be redoing their introductions because Oliver forgot to press a button. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hello, Andrew Rudin, uh, prison refugee, uh, top aided, a couple battle hardens. Uh, yeah, nothing crazy. Uh, Tyler Horsepool, calling winner, uh, Vegas, you know, I've, I've never played a, a, was illusionist card in my life. Yeah. yeah. You just played Sigil Solace, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely. definitely. Uh, yeah, Craig Pollock, so I'm the guy forgotten from Tyler's Calling. I bubbled out of that one at night. Uh, got a top eight battle hearted in Leo and been playing a lot of uh, Guardians, so uh, a lot of kind of local tournaments that I've won and they call me the Scourge of Pasadena, where I'm from. So, if you come down here, you have to get through. Watch out. How did you win the so calling, by the way? I think you were there in the top eight, right? I won. The, there's been three so callings. I played in two of them. I won one, and I got top four of them. Mm. That's That's and now I'm, I now I'm it's apparently it's famous from this thing, even though I thought nobody had seen it. So, <laughs> a few times of that, and it's blown my mind. All righty, well, France, go ahead and. Just Reintroduce our first uh, whiskey today. So, this is Yamazaki 12. Mm -hmm. This is the 12-year version of Yamazaki. If you don't know Yamazaki, you're kind of living under a hole if you ever like whiskey. <laughs> Yamazaki is very well known for being one of the first non-European whiskeys to win Whiskey of the Year, about like eight or nine years ago, I think. This is not the coveted 18-year that won, but this is their 12-year, and it's getting very readily available recently. Yeah. <laughs> you guys can have some. Hey, Stop. 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 Yeah. Stop. 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 I don't know. I always feel like a heavy hand over the first one. Yeah, yeah that's, that's trying to appreciate it. Thanks. Okay. So kind. So kind. Of and the clues all are Prison Brothers. Yeah. Yeah. That's oh, so like that. I will say you tell you guys my name on the, on like the, you know how they get the honor roll for prison? Yeah. Because I, all the pro twice that I did. I uh, traded on the gold foil. <laughs> took, took the gold foil for yeah, the This man sold his soul from gold foil. <laughs> <laughs> I respect that. Uh, there's some gold foil? I lost that student. There's some gold foil? 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 It's Yamazaki. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's even expected. It's Yamazaki. There's their their reports. Is that your seal of approval? Yeah. Yeah. He didn't make the mega like uh, face. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I usually make that face too, and I didn't yeah. go full. Yeah. I didn't like it. All right. What's your first question, guys? So I guess I first wanted to say or ask, how did you guys do this weekend? Now that we're past day two of Worlds, um, how did you go past that? And then I have one question. Like, what, what was your record? Um, we'll start with you. Yeah, we'll start with my record? Yeah. So, 9-7. Nine, 9-7. Seven. Nine, seven. Um, started out pretty good. Started out 4-1. And then ended day 1-5-3. And then today, I did kind of the opposite of Oliver. It was kind of a train wreck. I managed to 0-3 my draft and just lose all chance at it, and then I 4 one blitz, so, so yeah, not too bad. Still format. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, similar to Craig, I finished yesterday 6-2, two, 2-1 two, draft, 4-1 constructed, playing Briar, and then today had the train wreck draft, 
Pose 3. Um, I think got paired up in the last round, which is weird. Um, and then 4 1 and Blitz. So 8 2 constructed, 2 4 limited. Uh, 68 level, unfortunately. But, <laughs> that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, not that great. I mean, seven and nine, so probably the worst. Went four four on the first day, and then I don't even know what I did today. I stopped counting after the third loss. It's all blur. Yeah, yeah. 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 Which is not the, 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 the so. Elo loss though. <laughs> no. Blitz always blitz. Yeah, it was tough. Like it felt like, like you know, uprising draft is uprising draft. Even when your deck's good, you lose the die roll in the five year, or you draw, you miss one turn, and the whole thing flips around, so it's, like it's, it's worlds, right? People yeah. are experiencing that, they'll know when to turn that or, or are they? Or, I mean, I would hope so, right? <laughs> I, I can't tell you how many of my opponents said they had never drafted before. Or no shot. Like wow. Yeah. Oh, I'm yeah. serious. Like, maybe like they're like, oh yeah, I drafted like once at nationals. So that's that's actually actually crazy. Yeah. So that's actually crazy. Impressive. So I guess my follow up question after asking that is like, so preparing for worlds, you know, big event, is there a specific goal that you? you try to target going into an event, especially something as big as this. What was your specific goal going up against? Like some people like to shore up weaknesses or like yeah. specify, like, I don't know, yeah. So uh, mine, I feel like if I just focus on winning that the results will come. I don't have to like focus on a specific goal in a given event and uh, you know, um, so, Mine are more ELO target based, so I want to keep my ELO high. Okay. Um, and it's not because, like, it's, I mean, part of it is like you want to keep getting the invites, but um, the other part is really that's just a barometer for me to be like, did I do well or did I not do well? And so, uh, you know, as far as did I get that target, the limited ELO is going to go down, down, <laughs> down, but you know, my constructed ELO is probably going to go back up to top 10. So that's nice. Yeah. You're just sandbagging your ELO, right? You're just sandbagging it for the next, <laughs> next set when it's better, hopefully. Yeah, but especially when I was like top 10 limited ELO, and now I'm like probably like 500. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. all, on, all on purpose. <laughs> so recalibrate them. And that's what Oliver did with this constructed ELO, right? So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think what's tough, right, is obviously you have to balance real life. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's been back to back to back. Um, you know, Tyler and I, we went to France, and then there was nationals, and then uh, this, and they're all in a short period of time, and then there's work and family and all of that. So, you know, I know for me, it was it was tough to think, like, how am I going to um, do really well in all three formats? So I know for me, I kind of like Oliver, I focus way more on CC and draft figure. I prefer it. It's most of it. Let's hopefully you can just kind of make it work, which isn't the best, you know. Um, I know that probably the guys who are going to play tomorrow, uh, you know, practiced all three formats a lot more. But I think it's like you just kind of have to balance what you can do and make sure you do your best kind of within your own constraints. Yeah. Have you guys been feeling any burnout? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. 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 We, this was a topic yesterday that we had with me. It's you've all. Not me, because I don't play, but uh, most of the guys around here feel a little bit of burnout so after Nats as well. Why did you point at me? Because you've been burning out. There's no, no uploads. Well, no, that's <laughs> because I don't have time to play. Yeah, that's okay. That's yeah, awesome. same thing. There's a lot of burnout, for sure. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I know for me, I was like, I was pretty happy. I was already on Guardian. Oldham was good. And, he, and then when they banned Pulse, I know it sounds like small, but if you're playing Oldham, you realize it was bigger than it seemed. And it's like, Oh my god, I really don't want to start over. Like that would have been the blitz time. And instead I'm trying to reach weak attack and it's like it just kinda of adds on to that. There's been no no coasting. Mm -hmm. Um you go for some coasting. Yeah, I, I, I definitely agree with that. Like there's a difference for me. Like if somebody wants to go play like a flesh and blood thing, it's blitz. You know? Um, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm down and I'll have a good time and that has nothing to do with the burnout. It's all like I need the deck. I need yeah. to fix my draft skills and do like three draft camps or whatever. That's the burnout part. So, oof. <laughs> I was feeling that I had to miss uh, Pro Tour Two when these guys went to France. I, I, I would have been there with them. I wanted to, but uh, I, I had to go to like a couple weddings around that time. And after that, it was just like after taking it easy, like jumping back on the train was super tough. Mm -hmm. Was it worth it? A bunch you have to deal with, <laughs> with prison being gone. I mean, that's another yeah, thing, right. right? It's like, 
going back, like I'm talking about a Pulse band, but like your whole Heroes band, you spent so much time perfecting it. You, you know, I know some people switch a lot, but one of the nice things, if you're time constrained, is you can kind of dial in one hero, and if it does well, you can kind of master it, and then when it's gone, it's like, oh crap. Yeah, yeah that's why I think like a lot of the tier two players, the players of tier two heroes, will eventually get good enough to like top it consistently, just because like nobody else is ever working. Yeah. yeah. But also it's copium, but also because like <laughs> you if you're like the one if you're Josh Lau and you're only you're known for Bolton and you're the only one giving Bolton points, you're like, okay, this is great, I can just reach a level of mastery that no other player can achieve on their their hero. Right? Yeah. I can't wait until that Living Legend roster comes out and it's just Josh Lau like, <laughs> 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 like the first twenty events you just yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Hold on, what about you? How's your burnout? I don't have burnout. I don't believe you. I'm killing. Okay. Honestly, right. Oliver is a different different animal. He did <laughs> weekly arm race for like the longest yeah. time. Oh my goodness. But now he can't even two two. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still I'm still learning the deck, but yeah, I run events as a TO and then I attend the weekly army events. Uh, but we don't have like as many army events as you guys in SoCal. We just have that one weekly one that everyone goes to. Um, and then for making content, I'm just busy with life. So yeah, like the only time I play is the only uploads you see that go to the mm-hmm. channel. I mean, to be fair, that's most of the only time you played before. Oh, yeah, sure. Just uploaded more. Yeah. <laughs> so, what's your testing regimen like? Do you guys only have like one armory around here? That's it. That's the test. <laughs> oh. Honestly, testing is mostly on yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Armory is just like we show up, we have fun. Yeah, yeah. We get in and out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So okay, yeah, occasionally we play like TTS online. That, that's what armory is so, like for us. I mean, yeah. there's, there's tryhards, yeah. but we're bringing, we're bringing the brews there. Yeah, yeah. 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 Most yeah. of our armors are actually limited um, in the shop I go to, so don't even get to practice constructing. Which shop do you guys usually go to? I'm at Hidden Fortress in CP Valley. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the crazy part is you have, he's all the way up in the north of LA, and then you have it all, like, all the way down to San Diego. And so that's like a three hour, maybe two hour drive. Three hours. Three hour drive between those two areas. But in that area, it doesn't matter which part you're in, you can go to one event every day of the week. Yeah. So, wow. yeah. Very nice. <laughs> hey, it's gonna be you. Is it though? Do you, do you yeah. want to? That's the question though. Yeah. What area are you in? So do you know? Yeah. Tustin. Tustin. Oh yeah. You're right in the middle of it. I mean, <laughs> most people are only like even Andrew's probably one of the most diehard, you know, top fifty boomer XP, top yeah. fifty. Not even boomer XP. XP. This man's just grinding. Yeah, he's just grinding. But even you still only going like maybe three or four events a week, right? You're not yeah. going every day. So I'm it down. was. Though. Slow down. Yeah. To, to me, it feels like I slow down. Three, four is slow down. I can barely commit to one. I, 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 I slowed from two to one. I just oof a lot. It's kind of a bunch of stuff to do. I think I relate with Andrew a lot. I had like, Fab was like, I was eating, breathing, sleeping Fab for like a month before Nats and after, just talking about it, checking chats, talking to people. Not so much playing games because. Well, I don't really like playing that much. Like, too much. I just like talking to you. <laughs> no, 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 it's like something like, you're like, not yeah, like me. TTF, I'm like, nah, I just want to watch. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, once, like, some other, like, um, personal life stuff came, like, uh, birthdays or weddings and stuff like that, and I, like, took a break from Fab, coming back, I'm like, man, do I really want to go to Armory? <laughs> yeah. No, I hear that. You're like, especially when fun stuff comes up, and yeah. like, like, you're like, I went on a trip, and it had nothing to do with flesh and blood, and you're like, yeah. I don't play much, and then you do, and you're like, oh yeah, this game is this game is great. Hey, Dynasty yeah. will be a nice holiday season for everybody. Yeah, I think it's a little like um, there's tension too because if you are trying to compete, you're doing nationals, worlds, all this. Like, you only have so much time. You want to focus it on efficient time, right? And like go to the armory. You don't really want to be the sweaty tryhard. Is like, yeah. But you kind of like I'm kind of wasting my time here. <laughs> And like, so there's kind of a, a, a little push and pull. Yeah, like who would bring Sarvo on Brave Me? Joseph. He's the only Sarvo player. No way! Wait, was I? No, but Joseph played. Joseph, like, so, Joseph played something for like March. It's so, like for two months, there's only like oh, one. Yes, but I brought troll stuff too. And then Dom played. Like, I played Channel Mount Heroic. Yeah, he played Mount Heroic Sarvo. Yeah, Mount Heroic Sarvo. That, that, that one was actually good. Yeah. So I would have played real Sarvo. Because <laughs> <laughs> I've been like, I have to. I'm wasting my time. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yours is screwed. My bad. My bad. <laughs> I actually <laughs> did. I actually grinded online events um, for for Jersey, and like I bring like brought Starbo like in the late on that XP break, and like 
people were salty. I had no idea. <laughs> I didn't know like there was like this unspoken rule that we played just like fun decks of this, and I'm like trying to slam my like <laughs> jersey <laughs> down. Yeah. yeah I, I, well, you got you got to win the game. <laughs> <You're so laughs> if, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna do an online armory every night, I need max points out of this thing. I'm always, yeah, I guess I yeah, I know. but it was only a week. But yeah, no, it is interesting though. Like. There's you, and you also you don't want to break new players back. So I'm yeah, like, exactly. I'm like him. So he was our only <laughs> prison player for the longest time. And what happened was that not only did he bully other prison players out of the meta, he also bullied all of our Bravos and Dories, which were most players. That's great. And I lost probably like forty games straight to all of them. Yeah. Over the course of a couple of few months. Yeah. What are those rune blades? <laughs> and then there's no rune blades because he all those all the rune blades are in attack meta. That and because anybody who tried playing Ripley would face the salt from all of it, <laughs> and he'd be like, "What is storming boom down I was like loudly complain to me after the match finished, and obviously like the other guy, no matter who he was, it's, it's just kind of awkward where you have this supposed like star player, <laughs> nice guy, honestly, just to be like completely like, salty and be like, oh, "Judge, this this game sucks. I don't play anymore." And as soon as he faced it, like a, a single like challenge. Yeah, you're, you're exaggerating a little bit, but when I, every armory event. When I when I first played Brian Lorenz in RTN, he he just high rolled me with like uh Rattlebone, Swarm and Gloomville, whatever but I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> this guy just like twenty three damage off three cards. <laughs> he just looks at me and I'm like <laughs> <laughs> I can hear the resentment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I do seem salty at first. Like even our friend Miles, he was like, Oh, my first memory of Oliver, he was so salty at draft, he was like, See you at when is this draft over? See you at CC. That's what I use. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And whenever, whenever we do we do tales of Aria draft, you like, oh, I hate draft. That's <laughs> <laughs> the worst. Bad, bad new player experience. I mean, sorry. Yeah, I've been trying to bully him out of it. Anyway, it's a big draft. Three O's draft. Yeah, <laughs> loves draft. O oh, three. <laughs> Just in case you need to. That's how you level up your class. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Used to hate. Hate. Hey, how come I didn't? How come I lost every Blitz game if I hate Blitz? Because oh, no, Blitz, actually Cause, cause Blitz, Blitz is a, is a dying one for every cluster. No, no, it's because you don't actually hate Blitz. But <laughs> you are very Sundere uh, for Blitz. <laughs> are you serious? That's how I feel. You love Blitz. I hear you praise all the time. Sarcastically. Absolutely. Some people just really, really like Blitz. I think Surrey really likes Blitz. Mm -hmm. I enjoy the games, whether I think it's a competitive format. I think there's some skill involved in how to math. There you go. I, I do you agree. With that. Yeah. Do you agree with James's assessment of Blitz? Then it's like it's best for a new player because the games don't matter. So you can just like play it, play it again. Whereas like CC is just like after losing like a match against Ultra, like, oh, I, I, I do think yeah. that's true. That's like it's daunting as a new player to get into CC. That's why you said that. So what's this one? This is Ichiro Molten Grain. This is their limited edition. Um, I think it's released once a year. This is the 2021 in particular. Very similar to Yamazaki, so I wanted to see what you, know, you guys thought of it, mm -hmm. comparing the two. It's very similar. Whiskey. Mm -hmm. It's almost sweeter on the nose, though. Whiskey smells really good. Mm -hmm. Whiskey notes, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> you getting a, a subtle, you know. Mm. It's a little sour. Let's go back to that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think. I actually haven't tried these side by side. It's mm -hmm. not as smooth. Not nearly as smooth. No, it's not at all. I'm a dragon. I got fire, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think this is as old, which might be what makes it you know, a little rough on the mm -hmm. ears. How old is this one? I think this is a blend of six to eight years. Six to eight. Okay. So still a child. <laughs> yeah. So what's your next question? Uh, so, um, I want one good and one bad thing about worlds. Oh, I want to hear a lot of I want to hear a I want to hear a spice. You know what the love is. We can wait yeah. for the end of this so to okay. ask that question. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to do that at the end? No, let's just run it. No, let's run it. Yeah, let's run it. Yeah, who wants to start? Maybe um, we should start on this. Yeah, I'll really start yeah. yeah, what's your favorite part about Warlords? Let's explain it. I got to play fat. That's the highlight. Oh my <laughs> God. I set the bar very, very low. <laughs> okay. My low light? I don't know. Oh, five blitz. 
that's, that's hard. That was kind of expected. Like, yeah. yeah, but he. <laughs> I put no effort in the blitz. It's like that's what I get for it. It's like hey Chris, you reached so close to top sixteen. I was, <laughs> I was up there. <laughs> you had the chance to rag on Jason Chubb for, for chain. You oh, it. because I could have played in the top in a dev in, in, in a dev thing, like yeah. match. That's fine. I don't really care. I have fun. Hmm. Uh, so, yeah, do you want to no, no. talk more about no low lights? No low lights. No. Easy. No. Okay. Well, I'm gonna say what everybody else probably has on their mind, which is the thing sucks. Yeah. Um, but I will say it's better than I expected because the moment I heard that we were using the tent, memories from GP San Jose 2015 from Magic yeah. flooded back where I remember the tent was cold as hell, it was shit for acoustics, and it was miserable walking back and forth. And we had 20 porta potties outside instead of like a relatively fine, like mobile home trailer bathroom. Yeah. Um, so I will say that the from 2015, the infrastructure has improved, but the venue itself is not the greatest and definitely was the subject of a lot of comments online where it's like, this looks like an airport hangar. And if you look outside, it looks like an airport hangar, hangar being fumigated. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. it does. It does. Yeah. It does a bunch of clowns in the tent. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the sucky part about it is that, you know, we went to Jersey for Pro Tour 1, we went to Lille for Pro Tour 2, and now people are coming to our home tour, yeah, right? right? Yeah. And this, and this yeah, is yeah, what it is, like, oh, and it's like, oh, this is like, not what I want to do. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> I was like, I was like oh, this is going to be so great, you guys are going to be have a nice, nice time to come into the center. It's like, oh, no, they have the tent. Yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is California. Prices are too high. You know, you get what you get. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's not something people understand. But they can at they least afford it bulbs and their lights that can actually like <laughs> light the room, right? Like, it was like sleepy in there. You're like, you get in there, it's like, oh, it's nap time. Yeah, like, the lighting was the part that killed me the most about the menu. Like, I get it, the aesthetics, whatever, but like, it was, I think they could turn the lights up. And then the food. I know it's normally the food sense of these things, but it was pretty rough. And there wasn't like, it didn't feel like there was easy options, like, Right nearby, there's still there is, there's still there is, yeah, there is, but not like right next, not like not 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 in, 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 the, in, there, in between yeah. rounds, yeah, it's true. nearby, yeah. right? Yeah, um, it's like one hour break nearby, yeah, yeah, but they didn't do a one hour break. Yeah. Yeah. That was surprising, it's only yeah. SCG, they no, it wasn't because they had a yeah. little two. Oh, the little two, yeah, yeah, yeah a little two. So it's like it's surprising that they didn't do it for this for this event, yeah, yeah. Oh, like an hour break, it was different, yeah, gone to the market, yeah, great. Um, yeah. We went there on our off day before we started. It was awesome, but yeah. right around there, not so good. The market was flooded. <laughs> <laughs> I will say good things. Um, one, there were more than two artists. I'm really happy there were more than two artists. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I know Sam Yang and MJ are kind of like a given because they're with LSS and half of LSS came with over here. But having like at least four other artists is pretty good, especially because like. When Mark Poole was at um, Pro Tour or, or U.S. Nationals, it's kind of just like him sitting by himself, and it felt kind of like kind of sad. Yeah. Um, no, no offense to Mark Poole, of course, he's a guy, a great guy, but you know, it's, I'm glad they had more artists. Yeah. Let's see highlight. I mean, I played in the comment, but highlight was this was today was the first time I was ever able to play Rouse and to pulverize, and I was like, wow, what? That's a play. Yeah. Wait, round show time? Really four no. Rise, and then? I just heaved four surgeons, uh, drew up a natural four blue handed rouse, and I was like, oh. And that, that I was losing to Dash the whole time, and I was like, I needed, I already have heaved the polarize, and I was like, I need something more. I don't know what it is, but I need something more. And then I drew the rouse, and then I crowned for a blue, actually, but then I was like, oh, this is amazing. And then I won off of that. Oh. Low light. Uh, not making D2, but you know, that happens. Long, long game versus Oldham at the end of the day. And uh, just couldn't quite get there. Very close, as usual, with Guardian Mirrors, but, you know, he eked it out. I think, yeah. yeah. I think Highlight also was just like, just all the people were very nice for the most part. I, I maybe had like one or two opponents who weren't really interested in talking, but that's fine. You know, they're there to compete. There's a couple of foreign, pick, foreign players who weren't really like, were well versed enough in English to make a conversation. Yeah, that's it. But yeah, for the most part, I would be like, oh, where are you from? You know, have a good time. Yeah. Nothing too crazy. Yeah. yeah. So, low light. Venue, but not like it, the venue sucks. But it did remind me of GP San Jose in 2015, which I attended, and it reminded me of me getting salty in Sunday, like Pro Tour invite event, 
where I lost my wooden name to Andrew Brown, who is now a game designer for Wizards of the Coast, because he had two majestic, two mythic dragons in his draft pod. I got fucking wrecked. <laughs> I, got, I was so salty about that. Um, oh, was it like uh, Solemgar, like something else? Solemgar and Ojutai. Yeah. Yeah, so he plays Ojutai, right? Turn six, Solemgar. Wipes him four. Monster. So compared to that, you're less salty here. Yes. So the highlight, to follow up on that, I fucking love the community. People are so happy to be here, even if it's a shit event. They're so happy to be at Worlds. They're so happy to play that. Like, everyone was super positive. That it does have like a kind of a uh, infectious effect on the players as well, where people who are usually salty are less salty when everyone else is having fun, and when you can't blame bad top decks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can still blame that, but like, it's like, oh, bad top deck, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I had some bad variants like today. Yeah. That's, yeah. But regardless, like, my opponents were super hyped on it. Like, they still thought it was a great game. Even though mm-hmm. yeah, they lost because they beat them. No, yeah. there's, <laughs> I had my two losses, my opponents were like super hyped about winning because they thought it was really hard. Like, and I thought I, I was very inside. So, yeah. I don't know. It was, it was great. Yeah. So, gaming low lights and high lights, I guess the low time <laughs> point was. Punting the draft, I actually felt like I had a pretty good draft deck today, and it, my deck just had the variance. Like it was, I haven't seen this bad of fat draws and pretty much ever, and it was back to back to back. So that was rough. A uh, highlight to kind of make it up. I beat a prism with Olam. Nice. Now that and blitz and blitz. Okay, that's fair. Which is still, <laughs> <laughs> which is still <laughs> not as interesting. Which is still okay, but after losing all three drafts and then the opponent flips over prison, you're like, oh no, and now we're just gonna keep the train going. Uh and uh and pulling it out. So that was fun. Uh the actual highlights I think is as you can see Andrew and I are wearing our James White shirts. Uh, our group did a like a we all dressed up in James White. Yeah put the picture right here. Um, <laughs> was, um <laughs> and James was a great sport. We ended up uh, getting some pictures with him, and they put it on Twitter, and, and it was just it was pretty yeah, fun. That picture was hilarious. Yeah, do you guys yeah. do the pop color? Too? We did the yes. pop color. I got it down. This is actually the Alex Four with down. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, actually, it actually doubles up. Um, and uh, and then and then Chris Ayali, who's who's part of uh, part of our group, he. Yeah. He's in the top eight. He's a six seed going into tomorrow. So that was mm-hmm. just amazing. Good yeah. luck, Chris. It's yeah. Brian's a drama, too. Yeah, Easy so, so, and, and, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> just, just, uh, <laughs> if you haven't had the pleasure of playing against Chris, he's just an absolute monster. So, yeah. um, so good. really excited. Yeah. Also, shout out to Wesley Dong. Yeah. 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 Let's, Let's go, Wesley. Wesley. Let's go. Actually, Let's go. Actually, Actually won out. Yeah. Actually won out. Yeah. yeah. I was talking to Wesley. He's at our hotel. I was talking to him last night. And he was kind of like him and on over his 5 3, and like, ah, maybe, you know, I gotta win. I have the worst tiebreakers. There's no way I can make it. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. And then he, and he wins 8 0 today and makes it. So, mm-hmm. I'm probably gonna be like, yeah, yeah. the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, you know, Wesley's great. So. Just stand right here for Blitz. Yeah. That was some real tech. Yeah. Yeah. Real tech. All right. My, my highlight. So I guess I gotta pick something else and then Chris you can, Yeah, I mean you go I think it's all our highlights. Yeah, so our, our group has been absolutely killing it all week. Like um I go, I wanna say that maybe twelve of us were playing Briar just off the list that we came up with, which kind of skewed the meta game. I was surprised that there were so many Briars, but then I was like, wait, twelve of us are playing Briar. <laughs> yeah. Um and similar thing with the Icelander list, and almost everyone that played it was like, yeah, I'm four one, I'm you know. Three, two, like all winning records down the line, um, so that that felt good. Is like someone helped us make the list and things like that. So I guess that's a, that's a highlight for me. Is that I felt like that was a win uh, in my book. The low light. All right, here we go. Here, this banquet. <laughs> um, yeah. So you know we got there like casually late, and usually when we go to these things, like you can just kind of. You know, go through the check-in. Maybe you have to wait in line behind a couple people for a couple minutes, and then you're in, and there's wide open spaces. You get to go see everybody, and then there's like a seven place for food. Uh, we waited in line this time for I want to say somewhere between thirty and forty minutes, um, just to get in. Just to get in. Yeah. Then when we got in, we had to get in a separate lines for food, which was also about 20, 30 minutes. Yeah. 
And then when we got to the front of the line, they had run out of food, which doesn't feel good. Um, not only that, there was, it was really hard to find a place to sit. Um, I could see what they were coming up with when they saw this place. You know, like there's a video games on the side. If they had like a hundred less people yeah. and they just didn't sell the tickets online, it'd be so much better. Uh, yeah, I, I could definitely, definitely see it. But how, you know, how it was run, basically, I was just like, well, I got to eat at some point. I'm not going to wait an hour yeah. to eat. So that left a bad taste in my mouth, you know, just gave away the drink tickets, basically. And I uh, was about to piece out, but then the announcements kind of started and I saved for those. But then they got to the panel and I was like, all right, time to. I, can't, I, could, I could barely get the panel. Yeah. This. And I, I understand it's free for me to get in. It's part of the world's package, but it's still wasted, you know, hour and a half of my time. And, and it was something that I was looking forward to. And then I can't believe like if you paid like sixty dollars to get in there, and then you got yeah, pizza, yeah, you got you got pizza. or nothing or nothing yeah. around the salad, um, yeah. So hopefully they they fix that for next time because you know, um, positive. You know, because we're talking about, I want to highlight something positive they did. I thought the tournament ran really smoothly. I didn't. I don't recall waiting like half an hour for like the next round to start, except for when they intended it to. Right. So. It was just like, oh, like sometimes you look at that timer and it's like negative 20 minutes. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, that didn't happen. So I, that, I'm creating props to see if the other side same thing. I think this is the first day one trap that didn't run on the timer. Like, That's true. Yeah. Didn't get the same thing. Um, a little like for me, personally, I, I'm, I'm a collector first and a player second. So like these guys are definitely like a lot more like killers than I am, I would say. And as much as I've done pretty well, like, to me, I love collecting more and me being playing so much, me playing makes me miss out on a lot of, like, collecting. Like, to me, it kills me that I can't get a Regicide Planet because I have to keep playing. Yeah. And that's it. Uh, it's nice that the one thing I really like was when we could buy, like, stuff from the artists on the website. Yeah. So I could just pick it up later. Like, that helped me a lot. Um, um, which, by the way, they're going to they're gonna open those up again. So if you, out, yeah. if you missed out on anything tomorrow, okay. it ain't I'll double check. I'm working there. I'm buying yeah. everything. <laughs> well, is it is it online? Yeah, it's on their like the yeah, thing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They won't let us buy more than one planet, which is kind of sad because I really wanted eight bottle planets mm. <laughs> for cute. Those are oh for oh, cute. Oh. Okay, all the extra planets, they're amazing. Yeah, yeah. they look so cool. Um but yeah, for as a collector, like my little light is not being able to like actually collect all the stuff that I want to collect. But um, a highlight, like as a player and like for our team, it is insane. Like one of my best friends, Anthony, is Anthony fan is made playing day two at the calling. He fucking crushed it. Like it's it's so awesome. I I brought him into the game and it's like it's like one of the huge pieces of our testing team. Like. Oh yeah, when he got in there, you could instantly see that this guy's a killer. Like this yeah. guy's destroying, yeah. yeah. And then here he is actually destroying yeah. worlds. And it's got to be even better if you brought him into the game. Yes. Yeah. Ever since I know him, such a competitive man, he's so good at everything he does. And oh, that, that that guy's lead set in the league is <laughs> <laughs> worlds above. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Funny how both worlds are the same. Yeah. 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 Oh. <laughs> they, they did it because it's cheaper. <laughs> Saw the other venue so service. Looked at was like, oh, mm, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, next drinking question, I guess. All right. Should I ask something? My one question. Sure. Yeah. Go sure. for it. All right. Yes. So I have a question to ask people. Where it goes like, what do you like most about competitive card games? But for for this, I, I don't want you guys to say like, oh, the friends I made along the way. You know. Like I mean, what do you guys actually like about competing? But that's the real truth. No, but like, you know, like, is there anything about like competing, whether it be a card game or just like, like, is you know, com- how big of the competitive drive is a factor, I would say, in you playing Flesh and Blood? Or what factor is maybe how much you enjoy the game, and then what factor is friends and good, good friends? All right. A little detour. Before we answer that, friends, what is this game? This is a 13 year old. Wild turkey. Oh, wow. This so is small. what's that? Looks so small for turkey. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, excuse me. Oh, what do you mean? <laughs> you go. 
Uh, this is a Dewey free release. You can't find this anywhere else other than your books. Um, Could you start explain what that means? For so, beers, of course. Yeah, Dewey free Dewey essentially Dewey means there are, there are specific bottles of whiskey and or other you know, alcohol, wine, whatever, that are only available at airports. I don't know why, but in order for you to pick one of these up, you actually have to leave your country or go to a different like country to bring that Oh, I I, oh, so that's what the stores are for. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I always thought those were like, those were like kind of cheap, like touristy things. No. Yeah. Well, yeah. Stuff you can't get anywhere else. I, don't, I think it has something to do with like import or export tax, because you can only bring those, like if you get something at SFO uh -huh. and you're going on vacation to like, like for example, Philippines, right? Asia, okay. Um, I'll grab a bottle, I'll bring it there. But I can't actually bring it back. Oh, okay. Yeah. Interesting. Hmm. Okay. No, no. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. This is just like classic wild turkey, but a lot more, you know, refined. Classic. It smells like Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Wild turkey is very well done for like baking spice. Interesting mouthfeel. Very interesting <laughs> mouthfeel. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> um, I like that. Yeah. I like that better than the last one. I like the last one better. I think they've gone progressively. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> the first one was the best. Yeah, the first one was the best. But actually, like, <laughs> yeah. the right one's more spicy. This but, is my favorite. That's why we're good. Alright, that sounds good. Yeah. Cool. So, what was the question? Yeah, well, uh, uh, confession. confession. Why, why do we like this? Like, you, you got, um, how big of a factor of you playing flesh blood is the competitive aspect of nature? Gotcha. As a, if there was a different game that was competitive, you didn't play that. Yes. What makes you stay with that? Or why not play like a more casual card game, for example? Whatever that may be. Yeah, so obviously we have an uh, array of like card games that we could play. I mean, everybody knows all the big ones Magic, Pokemon, Yu Gi Oh! You can just want Yu Gi Oh! Dragon Ball Super, Digimon now, yeah. Hearthstone. Uh, Hearthstone, you can play online. <laughs> yeah, uh, so I'll tell you that, like, the online games have never resonated with me. Like, I used to be a big Magic Grinder for about 10 years, and then um, obviously COVID hit, and it's like only Magic Arena. Yeah. And I grinded the ladder, proved, like, I, I can. I can hit top 250 or whatever it was to get into the tournament. Yeah, it was 250. Yeah, and uh, I was like, okay, I can do this on a consistent basis, but I'm not having fun. Like, I'm not, I'm not talking to my friends anymore. I feel like it was uh, an actual slog. It was such a grind. Yeah, yeah, so that made me stop. So I realized that's a big part of me is like the, you know, me, you know, coming together. James White says the, the friends, friends, the friends, yeah, the, 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 the flesh and blood, yeah. Yeah. playing great games. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. As far as the competitive part of it yeah. um part of it is definitely trying to prove myself and i think in order to have people that are like the best of the best there has to be some sort of incentive and so like you know it might be kind of like dirty to talk about the money aspect of it but like the pricing being a million dollars this year or something like obviously i got into it before that but like mm. it was still that makes me want to like keep going because i know everybody else is going for it so you know worlds hundred thousand dollars first place prize like i know all the best players are going to be there so i need to be there you know so that, that's a big that's a big driver for me to keep coming not that i need the money but it's me knowing that the other people are going to be there because you see a lot of other card games and then i go play and you're not really playing for anything you can see the the level go down so that's uh that's me for me uh growing up i never had a, I never had anything like competitive to like, or anything like really to be competitive. But I always had that drive. Like that's why I like League of Legends a lot. I had played a lot. I used to play like shit ton. I'm like a D-Gen. I love the game. Like I'll always go back to it. But um, I I only played ranked to a certain point. I like never tried to push myself because I ne I didn't have friends. But, like my friends were never competitive. Ever. Yeah. Like at, at like anything that they wanted to do. So I was always alone in that. So coming into Flesh and Blood, especially starting off. I was like, this is the this is exactly what I always wanted for growing up, like period. So, like jumping in and getting in with you guys was like everything I wanted. Perfect. I have a follow up question though. If you could trash talk people like you trash talk people on League, <laughs> Dude, I love trash talk. <laughs> also, I'm sick. I, I, empty cursing is like the best thing ever. Like no one takes it seriously. It's just like just say it just to say it. Like it's it's that mouthfeel. Like, say, say, 
<laughs> saying <laughs> saying those words is so satisfying sometimes for no reason. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean they're they're, they're swear words for reasons. They have nice. They have really nice mouthfeel. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's not a word that I knew or a term that I knew before mouthfeel. <laughs> uh, for me, I've always had something I'm competing at. Um, so whether it was flesh and blood or something else, I like if I don't have that going on, like naturally somehow I find something to grab onto. And you know, there's some leaderboard or something, and then next thing I know, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm down the rabbit hole. And I'm trying <laughs> to get to the top of this thing. So often, it, it almost doesn't matter what it is. I just get sucked in by that. Um, Flesh and Blood, in particular. So I played Magic a lot years ago. I had gotten in. I uh, actually gotten re back in recently, and I was like casual. I was like, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to compete. <laughs> I just I like card games. So I'm like, I'm going to go to Friday Night Magic. I do like side events at like the Grand Prix or Magic Fest. So it's like I'm not, I'm like purposely staying away. And then uh, Flesh and Blood just sucked me in and then like it grabbed the hold. And I think it, for that personality type, it's kind of the perfect game because it's so, um, you know, with the, the lower variance and just kind of it hits all the right notes, I think, for somebody who has that kind of competitive mindset. Yeah. And I think to Tyler's point, it's not a video game. And I, I know for me, I'm I'm on the older side of like this crowd and like well no <laughs> side. <laughs> but it's like you can you can disappear for a long time, right? Like in your room playing games and it's like it's actually nice. I'm I play a lot of Talishar to practice, but I'm actually in the like I think the world's a better place when Talishar doesn't exist. Because going to the store, doing the things, um, it's great. And I know we weren't talking about the friends along the way, but, <laughs> you know, for, for this group, right, like we all started kind of as like crosstown rivals because of the way Southern California is, it's like separated out and like you'd only see each other at these events. And it's like, oh, that's that group, right? And we're all, and now we're all like friends and we're all together. And it's, it's actually been pretty cool. Um, and you don't get that if you're grinding on. And I think that's exactly what James was going for with the whole thing. And I think it's accomplishing that. We were just talking about the first Road to Nationals and all three of us were at our, our first Road to Nationals. And uh, I ended up uh, splitting the gold foil with somebody. <laughs> but uh, like, you know, Andrew was my only loss there. And uh, you know, and I and he was my only loss. Yeah. Twice. <laughs> Twice. <laughs> once in Swiss and once in the semis. Yeah. So, and, but like we didn't, we had no idea idea of who each other were at that time and, and looking back it's crazy how like you know we have like orange county group and, and upper northern los angeles group and high desert group and then like just all of us kind of like we're like oh we all like playing the same games we like doing the same stuff and, and melded together and now we're like really good friends so now we're just so cow group now yeah, we're just so cow well yeah. so now we're southwest group we're growing so we've had south arizona south and south 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 south. yeah we're sponsored by an airline wow <laughs> <laughs> yeah. looking at you alaska <laughs> <laughs> well, America's biggest we're, we're norcal plus canadians yeah. yeah oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. canadians are honorary norcal so. yeah because there's nothing in between yeah, no. Is that boundary? Come on. Oh, yeah, yeah. Be yeah, they order, are they in Washington or Oregon? They're, they're Washington. 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 Oh, Washington. Washington. Okay. Okay. <laughs> A lot of our newer players use Fat Foundry. Yeah. 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 We were, so, when we were new, we used Fat Foundry. Yeah. yeah. This is back in 2020. Yeah. Oh, really? Three little guys. <laughs> back when we were debating whether or not $150 is too much for a legendary. <laughs> Oops. Yeah. Amazing. And now he buys nine thousand dollar cool flow hearts. <laughs> That's for a good cause. It plays with them. Yeah. What about you, Oliver? That's a good question. Uh, I personally don't see Flesh and Blood as a competitive game card game because uh, growing up in an Asian household, they always compare you to other kids. And there's always that competitive aspect. So I've always grown up with that. And when I do competitive things and I do poorly, then that just affects me negatively. So I try to see things in like a very casual. Viewpoint, so yeah, casual does the best. Yeah, that's why you love flits. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, that's just how I want to approach things. Because I, uh, I rated WoW, I rated WoW hardcore. I had no life. I just played the game over and over again. I did Mythic Plus dungeons. I was like sixth in the world for Shadow Free. It's so many one percentiles. Yeah, and like oh, 99. Sorry, yeah, 99th, but like literally in the top one yeah. percent of like. I know life's WoW so much. Yeah. 
But I thought I was good at Shadow Queens. Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> but uh, yeah. yeah. I, <laughs> but yeah, if I do something competitively, if I do poorly, then it just affects me negatively, and then it just gets my head. So I just want to play casually, play for fun. For sure, it's yeah. a positive. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like, okay, everybody's definitely got to do something that works for them because I know that my mental can get in negative spots by if I think about tournaments in the wrong way. So that's why I fe- that's why I always focus on little goals. Because if I focus on like I need to get first, uh, and, and I don't, which is everybody but one person, you know, then uh, I'm not gonna have a good time. So. Mm-hmm. What about you, friends? Um, so to expand on Tyler, uh, the recognition, like that's really what I like to compete with. Not even the fame, just like knowing I could be there in those top tables with the rest of like the good players, right? I want to like, oh, I know you. You're very like really good player. You're a pro player right there. Oh, I'm going to see you guys. Cool. <laughs> that, I don't want. I don't care if people know my name. I just want to be there and experience that with you know at the highest level. So. I didn't make Worlds, unfortunately, uh, one win away, but, you know, I had a lot of fun, and I was glad I was one win away, because that means I can get there. Yeah. So, just being able to strive higher than where I'm currently at, that's what keeps me track. Well, yeah, I like to answer this one, so. I mean, you can answer why it doesn't look up you. For sure, I'll go. I'm a judge. <laughs> but why? Somebody has to be the judge. <laughs> He's so good. If somebody else judge, would you not judge? No. I like power. <laughs> yeah, I, tol- I tolerate you. I tolerate you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for me, I think I'm also, I relate to Andrew. Like growing up, I didn't really do that many competitive things. Like I played like junior high sports, but it's like not that big a deal. You know, you just play to have fun with friends. And then high school, I didn't also really didn't do any like sports or like chess or whatever. Um, but like I, I've always been, you know, doing PvP gaming whether it's League or card games like Hearthstone or whatever. And I don't know, I never was like amazing. Like, I remember in high school, I was like, I couldn't even hit Legend in Hearthstone. I was just like, okay, I'm just having fun, you know. Hey, hey, chill. You're <laughs> <laughs> the same guy right now. He's like, I can't believe I got there, you. I got there, don't worry, don't worry. I was saying in high school though, but what was it? In college, I found this game, uh, TFT, mm-hmm. Team Fight Tactics. Mm-hmm. And then I just like grinded away at it. And then I was able to hit Challenger and then I was like, do I have, can, can, I, can, I, can I be good at something? <laughs> not like good in that sense, but like really good at something if I like put my mind to it. We'll so then writing, it's not So for me, the, the same, the same, yeah, that is true. I don't, I don't really try to win TFT. It's like, well, it was part of my job, but not anymore. But uh, what is it? For Fab, it was like, if I really put the time and set my mind to it, could I also like, you know, win a calling or win a pro tour or whatever? But at the same time, it's like, I don't know, there's just something about it where, I'm more likely to really prepare and play when it's like just an addiction. Like I'm not thinking about winning or anything. It's more like it's all my mind can think about. So I'm just yeah. And so recently, like my mind really hasn't been too much into fab, so I haven't put too much time into it. And I don't know if I ever really will like, dedicate and have that routine and structure almost. Because I'm kind of just like go by feel kind of person. But yeah, that's my answer. I do enjoy the competitive aspect. Just feeling like wow, I'm making really good plays today. I'm playing to my house. The game is going how I imagine it. I'd be like, I need to play toward this one out and I need to draw it. And then I draw it and I'm like, oh my God, I'm so good at this game. <laughs> <laughs> Just play to win, right? You can't play to lose. Oh no, always, yeah. always. I'm like literally only CNC Pummel was saving right now. I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's like, but, but, like, there's some people that just don't understand. Like you don't, you're not supposed to play to stay alive. Yeah. It's a losing game. You just lose, right? Yeah. 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 So you're on the post of the Pikachu. <laughs> 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 you can't. You start. Whether or not in theory that is correct is not bad. Yeah. It's all about practice. Well, those are, all those chains are bad. <laughs> That's what I got told. Yeah. All right. So for those of you, uh, those of the viewers watching, uh, the Canadians, you uh, can start the genius, have just arrived back home. And they're actually surreptitiously sneak past this. Uh, Are you the viewing experience? Oh, thank you. Yeah. No, they just want more whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next, next, next round. Let's go. All right. Oh, man. So these last two bottles here, they're also wild turkey, but they're called the Master's Keep series. Ooh. So uh, they release these special series oh, right. every single year where it's like a special oh. barrel or a special. Oh, my God. <laughs> I said, <laughs> but these are some like 
my favorite bottles. I'm a big wild turkey fan. It is like the one bourbon I will always drink. Even 101 for like the classic like wild turkey eating. It's just I like the notes. It's my yep. style of whiskey. Okay, notes. That's good for it. Notes. This one in particular is a rye. Uh -huh. I believe it is a seven-year rye. I completely forget what is so special about this. Um, I don't open these very often because I, I like to. I want to make this as make this last as much as possible. Mm -hmm. And we have the privilege of notes. <laughs> We're learning everything today. No, it's mouthfeel. So for, for reference, these come in these really nice boxes. Um, how much are the boxes? Uh, these bottles in particular, if you find them at retail price, are like 200 mm -hmm. I'm trying to know about the box. Yeah. Not the whiskey. Well, no. Is it like you where you can buy the boxes only? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Do not buy empty boxes or bottles. People buy them to fill them up with fake shit and then resell them. Do not do that. I mean, you should do that because that way you're preventing other people from doing that, right? You destroy them or keep them as keeps them. Alright, cheers. All right. cheers. 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 This is a little spicy. Oh my. It's, it's alright. It's alright. This one's spicy? Yes. The last it's very, one spicy. Usually, last I remember, it's a very peppered finish. Ooh. <laughs> Afterwards. <laughs> nope. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, was yeah, I was about to say it was smooth. I like, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like the spice. It's getting worse and worse. That's, that's, that's my stuff. Yeah, you guys like spice. If you guys taste it, you don't have to finish it. You know, I, it's perfectly no. fine. No, it's too expensive. That hit all the notes, and the notes work. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, friends, next question. So, uh, to me, it seems like there's two different types of map players. There's like, at least competitive map. There's the, uh, what's it called? One tricks. The, the one tricks, the hero specializes, specializes, right? And there's people that attack the metagame in odd ways. Um, you know, similar to like Jacob Baugh's like all defense dash deck um, or Michael Hamilton's battle page. Um, do you guys have thoughts on those two types of players or like, do you think one is more successful at the moment. What are you? What? And what? Which player are you? And which player are you? And like, I have a follow-up question after this, but yeah, let's start with that. All right. Well, I'm a one trick. <laughs> <laughs> two trick. Two trick. Three trick. I Three can trick. play any guardian. Oh, Valda. <laughs> <laughs> I can play Starmo, Brawl, Starmo. It doesn't matter. I'm sure everyone. If he hair carries a hammer, I'm in. Um. No, I think I think the latter player you described, the the Michael Hamilton, mm -hmm. the Jacob Fall, like I would say that that's a I'm gonna just say better player, right? Because it's like you can you need to be able to understand the foundation of the game well enough and what's actually good to be creative like that and actually have it work, right? Anybody can make a creative deck, but a creative deck that can win national champions is like a whole different story. So I definitely think that's where you would want to strive to be. I don't know if everybody has that. Um, I'm in everything. I'm more of a refiner than a you know uh, an innovator. So like um, you know, sometimes people say like my guardian list might be creative, even though it's just a take on it. So I think there is something to say about mastering a class so that you can make those few card tweaks and actually know why at like a really deep level so i think there's something there um but i would say if you want to uh, win worlds you should be able to kind of um strive towards being able to build from scratch yeah i um there's a you know there's tons of fat players out there now and i think it's really only the the top you know tippy one percent or whatever you want to call it that are like true innovators and those are the ones where you see like oh that's i have to look at their deck list so now that jacob Baugh has shown this defensive dash and this isn't the first time he's done this you've done it before um everybody's got to see their deck list now mm -hmm. right and that's how you make a name for yourself and i'm not going to say like these people are going to top every tournament but a lot of them do like you know michael hamilton i'm going to put pablo pintor in that like his his take on this right was interesting cutting out certain 
portions of card, like entire swaths of cards uh, when he played last Pro Tour. So, you know, I, uh, I don't know that, you know, I have that, that button in me all the time, but when I'm really looking for it, like, I definitely have the, the drive to try to get there, but, um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not quite there, there yet, according to myself. So, um, I wouldn't consider myself more old. I wouldn't consider myself a, a one trick though. So that's, I don't know, I'm torn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely not much of an innovator. I'm definitely, I've always been a part uh, uh, of, of the philosophy of refining the one thing. And I take this from Anthony, but when we used to play League, you play 20 games of the same hero to get good at that hero. So it probably, I would double that for any class I would play in this game to feel confident in that hero. Just to give you guys a little insight on our like group, uh, you know, dynamic. Dynamics is we probably have what like fifteen people or yeah. something like that, and I want to say that probably only two or three of us like we're throwing out new new stuff, new deck lists where you're like, that's wild. The rest is is probably refining, but those two or three people are probably carrying. Yeah, the, they drive a lot of the engagement. Uh, yeah, absolutely. It's a it's interesting because. You make the distinction between like one tricks and like innovators. I feel like the the inno the one tricks are just the guys who are just too stubborn to like switch off of something when they realize it wasn't good, so they have to innovate, right? Mm -hmm. Like all all of the door players have to innovate. All of the like levy players, they don't really innovate because there's nothing established. <laughs> <laughs> all the levy players switch to five. Yeah. Players, <laughs> yeah <all the> players, <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. This is like two. Yeah, tell that to Mance now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no offense to you, Mance. Yeah. Um, but like, yeah, that's like, we didn't see any Iceland players on significantly outperform with Battle Mage before Michael Hamilton switched on to it. And we don't see any, um, sorry, we don't see any, uh, we didn't see any, um, Yuki did so well at Nationals. Same with um, Michael Karaki. Yeah, yeah but, but they were playing like a relatively soft list, right? Yeah. I, I, think, I think Enlightened Strike was like kind of known information yeah. before, but. It's still a wounded bull that took everyone like going like going a step further. I think most innovation is that way in this game now. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's, it's hard to it's hard to go crazy. Like if you play a Dromai <laughs> deck, you're gonna play dragons. Yeah. But if you see a Dromai deck that's cut a lot of dragons and Iris. put in like like you know you could play Iris or anything like that, right? But like it, it you're not gonna see like a thirty card or more different. In yeah. deck most of the time, just because of where what stage we're at in this game, unless a new set has come out. Yeah. So, and obviously the best one tricks are do have that have the innovative feel, right? They they are they are able to identify what does this hero need in this meta game, and they are they are able to like tack towards it. So you do, so you do see like those players do well and like drive the um, meta game builds like Levi with Azalea, um, right? And more you know, D reacts than usual, yeah. right? So. I, I don't think that there's a distinction between the two. It's mostly just here are the people who are able to like rapidly adapt, and here are the people who are too stubborn and then eventually adapt. I also think like there's a there's the other side, right? There's building the deck, and then there's playing it. Yeah. So like, you know, again, going back to just the <laughs> strengths, right? It's one thing to be able to say, Oh, I built this deck and it seems like it works well. And then to feel like you can pilot at at a level that you're willing to take it to worlds, right? Mm -hmm. And I think so, you know, as a kind of guy who stays on one thing, like I'm I'm comfortable changing, but then like, you know, I'll play these guys who have you know a lot more reps on another thing. It's like, do I really want to play, I don't know, Briar Mirrors against guys who have a thousand games on Briars and like I have I've eight, you know? <laughs> and even if like I think I'm good, I, I know I'm gonna miss things. So I think, you know, there's kind of both aspects of innovating and then being able to actually play with that innovation at a, at a level you can feel comfortable for the event that you're going to be at. Yeah, fun. What about you, Prism One Trick? I am not a Prism One Trick. I feel like I'm a ma like a jack of all trades, but a master of none. Because I've played a lot of heroes. I've played Katsu, I've played Prism, I've played Dromai, Icelander, I've played Bravo, I can play Lexi, right? Lexi, 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 Lexi. Yeah. Lexi. Like I bet that's not Hamilton's play like Briar in our race. Yeah, so he's a master of that. Yeah, he mm -hmm. that's, I, that's why I said master of none. I can play most heroes proficiently, 
But if I want to get good at something, I have to be like you guys where I need to refine it, get a lot of reps. Mm -hmm. That's why I didn't bring Ice Center to Nationals, because I was like, oh, it's going to take a lot of reps. So I brought Droma instead. It was just more comfortable, because I would already played a lot of games. Mm -hmm. But I did want to play Ice Center eventually. That's why I brought it to Worlds. So a follow-up question to that. Uh, as the card pool deepens, do you think these one tricks are going to have a lot more innovation in comparison to those that try to attack the meta? Because I think because of the lack of card pool, you're kind of limited if you are a one trick. I think it's kind of dangerous um, for a game to evolve to the point where you have a deep enough, enough, enough card pool that you're not guaranteed to cyborg correctly for a specific matchup. Once the build becomes disparate enough that you need two different cyborgs to deal with it, then the game needs to be able to adapt to that and have the competitive scene adapt to be able to be flexible enough to deal with the two different builds. Once you have like, and we already see that with like full control dash and like full boost dash, where a lot of um, players will have to like 50-50 on like what they're trying to do. And obviously, right, right now, like boost, tech powder boost dash is pretty popular. So most people assume that. But if you tech for that and you start teching heavily for that, and it becomes the top tier metagame. Then control dash will just be like, okay, cool. I'll just randomly run control dash into you. And occasionally you'll just cyber run and have like 15 dead cards. I, I think that's a, a feature of the game, not a, not a bad thing. I mm -hmm. mean, we've, we've seen this with a lot of decks now. Yeah. You can have lightning lights here, ice lights. You can have control dash or boost dash. Um, Prism is famous, or all illusionists are pretty much famous for having different ways of playing into all yeah. different styles of, of decks. Um, you know, you can have like, oh, aggro, herald, prism, and versus five, but what then you're playing more prism versus guardian. And so, um, for most of these, as long as like, um, you know, these decks don't become too overpowered, I think that is the key, right? Like, you, you can't have one strategy or the other become too overpowered because what you do on it, you know, if you're if you're playing well, you're just game fearing, right? So yeah. like, what what am I weak to? Uh, I'm weak to boost dash, for example. If they play control dash, I'm probably going to auto win. So I'm going to board as if they are boost dash. And sure, they can go to control dash, but then it becomes like a more 50, yeah. 50 matchup. So I, I, I like that. This yeah. is kind of a half baked thought for us to think we're pigeonholing ourselves with the one trip, like th thinking of dash, like. Is control dash and boost dash really even the same deck, right? Like <laughs> we're gonna call it you only play dash, yeah. but you're playing a completely different play style. Um, and so I think you know it's I think it's just be open to that, right? Because like you, like Tyler said, it's kind of a feature. What's cool about dash, right? It's like you can you can change it completely for the meta. And I think somebody trying to get off maximum velocity. Has a completely different skill set and mindset than somebody who's you know building Exodia with their uh, induction chambers and their plasma purifiers. So you know just because it's the same hero, you know it may be multiple builds. And I think as the card pool gets deeper, to your point, like now you're going to potentially have multiple builds. It looks like now we're going to have like shield guardians and oh, two-handed no. guardians. <laughs> yeah. right? Like, but right, they're trying to do this shield like, and maybe that plays a completely different play style. Um, which is, I think, a cool way for them to build out the game so they don't have to, like, creep out to have a thousand different heroes, to have a thousand different play styles, because I think it is better, actually, to keep the classes and talents kind of tight. Um, otherwise, it gets a little out of control. Yeah, I actually think Azalea has this problem, because I think she has a lot of tools, and you can build a deck away to specifically deal with Rimblade, to specifically deal with Guardians, uh, because my best friend we got into the game with, he doesn't play competitively, but um, when we were doing kitchen table games, we would just shit on it. And <laughs> when I was, I was started off as Shane, he's playing Zelia, just like, ran the ledger a million times, and like, I'm just like, man, Zelia's broken. <laughs> 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 and then, but then he goes to Armory, and he plays the other heroes, it's like, the one way you play is not, it's not, it's not well-rounded enough to like, deal with everything else. And he's always like, looking at these things, like, oh yeah, this version is good against this, this version is but it's like, there's so many cards that are only good for one thing. And you do see this on a macro level too, where uh, if meta, if the meta game shifts away towards arcane damage, Chano gets better, right? So yeah, it, it, it is a, like a balancing act to do, but um, 
I mean, I, 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 I say it's dangerous because like I can see it at a point where uh, it is detrimental to the health of the game. But I don't think we're anywhere near, near that point. I think the game is relatively tight, even with these new styles introduced in Dynasty. Mostly because one, most of them don't look competitive, but also because <laughs> uh, also because it's like most of them are just like fun, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I feel like what is it? People are more likely to advocate their one trick lifestyle when their hero is not good. Yeah, true. Mm. Like I will be like, oh, I'm a Bravo stand, but because I know he's not like, well, he's he's fine right now. Yeah, he hips it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but like, you, you're not gonna go up to be like, oh yeah, I only play stand. So I don't know. There's some there's some pride in that. I feel like that's why it's such a big thing. Mm-hmm. Playing a lesser hero. Mm-hmm. Well, play it even though it doesn't win. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. One one thing I will say about like this one trick discussion in like card pools is that people either old players that have been playing a longer time or players that have been playing one hero for a really long time um, tend to remember the old cards that used to work at something. So as the card pool gets deeper and deeper, it's going to be interesting because those players will have an advantage when they're like, you know, oh, uh, you know, Levia, for example, in that set. And, and he'll remember a card from like Forever Go, and he's like, oh, this works with a new card that just came out, but no one else is going to remember that. Right? Oh, so, that kind of break from something good. Yeah, yeah, I've been waiting two years. Buckling blow is good now because of the new buckle. Oh, what's not <laughs> <laughs> Red buckling blow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, whatever. Cool, last one. Mm-hmm. I was just sick that of buckling blow. <laughs> <laughs> Four for eight. eight With a surge, it's basically yeah. wounded bull. <laughs> Think about basically. it. Basically. With a relevant on it. What's this last one? This is basically another wild turkey master's key. Mm-hmm. This is their very first bottle and bond. If you don't know what bottle and bond means, it means that it is under heavy restrictions to be released and have that label on the bottle. Essentially, all the grain has to come from one season, has to come from a single warehouse, um, uh, has to be a minimum of four years, has to be a bottle of specific proof, um, all these restrictions for this to be released. So what does that, how does that translate to in terms of price? Uh, price, not so much, but it's like guarantee of quality. It's so like, it's like free range. It's, it's, it's a USA <laughs> thing. I see. I feel like we're bottle and bonding right now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bottle and bond. This, so the primary note for this one, this is my favorite release um, out of all the Masters Key. Uh, I actually have three bottles of this. Um, but this is literally just cherry pie. Big that should be like an pie. assassin card, bottle and bond. Right? <laughs> That's pretty. <laughs> an assassin card? Because they're all alliterations. It's, it's an alternate name for your podcast. Last one. Cheers. Cheers. It's gotten progressively worse, so yeah. here's to hoping. Um, I think I'm going to like this thing. I will love looking at your face. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> I feel like the last one was worse. <laughs> really? It was. Yeah, I actually like this one a little bit. Yeah. It's still pretty. To me, there's so just good. so much nuance and like silkiness to it. I love it. This one wasn't like too bad. There's definitely a lot happening there. <laughs> yeah. Stuff. It's definitely got a full body flavor. <laughs> How's the mouth feel? That's uh, <laughs> not too bad. Hints of cinnamon. I don't know. <laughs> there's, I, I feel like there's a good old rye. Um, so, I know I'm really excited for the new Moonflake cards. Because I think it revives. I think it revives <laughs> like the Kotal Rune Play strategy. Not OTK per se, but like two or maybe three turn. And I, I love Art Mega Sensi. Very first card I like fell in love with. Got to pummel this guy in my very first armor. <laughs> like, oh, it was, uh, I was like, I know he has it, but I literally can't do it. <laughs> I'm like, it's dominated. You're me. <laughs> so that's so. My question is, uh, what are you guys excited for in Dynasty, and what what is the first thing you're going to be putting? Up? Something that comes off uh, for me right away is there's a new Runeblade card um, that eats up Rune Chance and then stores them basically for later. Looming Doom. Looming Doom. Looming Doom. <laughs> Great name for a card yeah. too. Yeah. 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 Um, you're a doomer. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, doomer. <laughs> it would be cool to build a deck around it, but I don't think that's quite the use going to be the use of the card. I think it's um, going to be more of an anti-guardian playstyle because what you would do is build up Brute Champ, play 3 
rings and so forth. But now you can build up those rune chants and then double them for the yeah. rest of the game. Yeah. Um, you trip about, I think it's like extension of your damage. Yeah. yeah. That's how I want to So yeah. I mentioned this last time. Um, this will be redundant. You can uh, spell on creepers then on the destroy triggers. You'll get the damage from the rune chants and then you'll still get the counters. That's crazy. So that's crazy, yeah. It's always the rune blades. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, thanks to, to be fair, <laughs> I think the rune blade cards are actually generally tame. Um, yes. They seem to have some sort of aura strategy, and I actually think it's going to be a puzzle for yes. them to figure out which, you know, sorry to rune blade players. I don't know if you have to play in four. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I'm, I'm excited. You know, uh, I thought Iris of Reality strategy's got a lot of help with the, the spectral shields and, and uh, blue cards too. Yeah. Um, there's there's a lot of really cool stuff in here outside of the obvious, like the big mech and you know that, all that stuff. So I'm I'm excited for the these puzzles to be solved. Uh, same. I mean, there's so many new tools. I mean, for as as much as I'm excited for a game play, I'm still a collector. So, Alt, Mar- Fable C and C. Oh, 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 oh. You gotta get a free set. Oh, easy, uh, easy. Yeah, yeah, easy. You have to okay. That's that so called Flap Daddy for nothing. <laughs> 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 you guys are Wow. I, mean, yeah, yes. right? I remember a year ago, people were arguing about whether C and C should go to Bravo. I was like, it's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's it's more relevant now that like you know more aggro decks are faster, you need more disruption, but. It's less relevant now because you have crap. Okay. Okay. Yes. They bless the first So unfortunate. So, yeah. <laughs> so sadly, I haven't even spent that much time looking at spoilers. Um, kind of in preparation for this and kind of saving it. But I will say, I think the assassin looks cool. Um, yeah. yeah. I don't know if it's going to be good or not, but the play style of it looks super neat, and I'm excited to try it out. Um, maybe I'll be a two trick pony. Maybe I'll be backstabbing or something. I, I didn't know. expect Mel to be like this. I, I didn't expect Mel to be a mechanic, but this like flavorfully, like it's the it's amazing. Yeah. 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 The I, OP helmet and boots. Yeah, no, I, I like it. It seems cool, but I'll well, yeah. head it back soon. Uh, yeah, looks tricky. So yeah. equipment recursion, and then Mill, and then also alternate wing condition to Royals. You know it. It's so <laughs> sweet. It's yeah. so, so I, cool. It's so flavorful. It's it's I've, I've been impressed with their ability to take the simple like red, yellow, blue pitch and like manage to how they've weaved in like the zones and the color strips to make like these different classes. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's incredible. Yeah. Actually, great. So I'm yeah. the game. Yeah. So we actually answered this question last time, but we can just kind of reiterate with sure, I will reiterate. the new our knowledge of. Uh, Fabled CNC, I guess. Yes, I'm very excited for Fabled CNC. Probably because I won't be able to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> but if you open it, mm, yes, if you open yes. it, you'll be able to Does sell Mel it. even yeah. buy boxes, though? <sighs> Probably not from this. I saw the Assassin map on SCG, I was like, I don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, I told myself I wasn't going to buy a case. Because every set I buy at least a case, but I'm like, man, why did I buy a case? <laughs> Just buy some things. It's fine. It is fine. But you could have a CNC in it. True, true. Oh, could have a Marvel Emperor. Okay, I would buy 50 dollars. Oh, oh. <laughs> 50 dollars? No, that's just regular. Oh, yeah. Is there a regular? 75 dollars. I really don't want that. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, I think <laughs> a Marvel Emperor is yeah. 100 plus for sure. Probably, definitely. All right, Oliver, what's your favorite card? It's all right, yeah. But I mean, no light loses yeah. right now, but I do like what it's going to entail. You can fight Blitz. I know, but fuck Blitz. Yeah. Uh, I, Hope there will be more allies that we can play with. Yeah, and having a like a mixture of allies and auras will be fun. But other than that, it's just gonna be assassin, obviously. Like Craig said, uh, it does fit my play style of just like blocking out and doing poking back a little bit. Cause I used to play mid range Katsu that pivots between control and aggro. So it's like just like Kadashi Kadashi Thread. Now it's Spider Bite Thread, or something like that. Spider Bite Thread. Spider Bite Thread. Yeah. When well, you just go zero for four. What do you think of the ward on the illusionist cards? The trash. <laughs> Not until we figure out why they put it there. Because it seems like they wouldn't put it there for no reason, right? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it seems like they, they put it there for the kimono. There's oh. probably like some kind of wards matter. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like yeah. It's just for the kimono. Yeah. yeah. There's going to be like multiple no, 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 coming like to, to it, it, like give it more support. Yeah. yeah. But aren't don't the spectral shields have ward now too? I mean, it's effect, essentially ward, but like yeah. it's just a replacement effect for yeah. reducing damage. I feel like. 
if they're going to be focusing on that special shield thing, then maybe they'll be like allowing you to make a ton of special shield to allow your armors to stay or something. And there's what there's that for. I know, I know. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, we'll see. Yeah. That's a block. You know, try that for like what Lucian's cards. Well, that's kind of it's funny you say that because I was kind of thinking like it does it adds more risk reward to to the blocks. Thing. Yeah, it's like oh, if I just let them hit me instead of using my life completely as a resource and going down to two and then having fifty thousand auras in play, I'm not looking at anybody in the room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, side of the you, table. You, know, you might have to think twice about that. Yeah. Every time I feel like I max raid my prism deck, they release another thing. I know, right? I'm just like, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> I need two Sarayas now. Yeah, right. CNC. Like, there's like all prisms in here. Uh, Is it Saray legendary? Prisms? Yeah, yeah, there's also two Marvel. Guardians. Yeah. Wizard yeah. Slash. I need two Marvelous Sarayas. I'm just working. Yeah. 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 But now we have CNC, so I'm just going to cut CNC's Marvel deck now. So <laughs> I don't have to max raid you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, Easy. Yeah. Says so the guy with the uh, CF heart in his deck. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's only one heart, right? So you have to get that. You have to get the purple. Yeah. Uh, of course, of course. Yeah. What about the? Because otherwise, you'll get judge call, right? The rainbow. Where's the gold foil? Um, no. Because gold foil is nice and flat. I would like to say I haven't. I, I don't think I'm a prison one trick. I have recently discovered that I like decks because I've been playing. I you know I've done well with Briar. I've done well with Icelander today. I like decks with auras in them. <laughs> I like making auras. So that's that's my new cop up. <laughs> what about allies? <laughs> what else was cool? Yeah. I feel like in Dynasty, every class is getting more. <laughs> yeah, 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 which yeah, makes me love every class. <laughs> <laughs> more guardian auras to not put in there. <laughs> <laughs> I like okay. allies. Allies are fun. They're neat. Mm-hmm. Even oh, if the oh, dragons are really annoying. Yeah. Of the auras, seismic surge is definitely. Least favorite. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like that. Okay, one. wait. I, I get to respond at the start of their turn. Frost. That's great. Yeah, yeah, you go. Yeah. Oh, nice. Arc Light Sentinel. Flashbacks. I had to remind my Briar opponent to please put the Earth Lord down because it's relevant every single time. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. All right. Well, thanks for coming on. Yeah, last question. What oh. does Oliver think about the specialty ash? Oh, they're trash. Okay. Yeah, they're garbage. Yeah. You so far, folks. from what we know, no, <laughs> until the end, everything's garbage until somebody goes through it. Yeah, I think Vincent is fine. Next year, Michael Hamilton. <laughs> <laughs> Why did we see this? Yeah. Challenge to Michael Hamilton to break the ash. Break <laughs> the I think I think it'll be played. I think it'll be played at least as a three, two off. I don't even have to go look at. This is the and it takes slots in your deck. Yeah, we Where do you want to take up for it? Draw the block two. Oh, the block three. Yeah, the block three. Yeah. 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 Has a rush. And they're red, which is like I draw my blue. Yeah. He has it, so. I mean, I have to touch Jeremiah a lot. But also, I'm going to Iris draw my, which is I put every in. Hey. Insane. I got to pummel things. That's what I'm going to do. Best guarding game. Okay, I don't know about that. All these non guardian players are like, oh, my pummel's so broken. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> like, I think it's, it's good. It's it's good. I think it's fine. But I just don't like seeing every single pummel against me. The best part is when they when they overblock by four because they know you have a red pummel and you have a red pummel and you just just like okay cool next turn. <laughs> when Arsenal passed. No, the best is when they overblock the CNC because I was like oh you want that's just thirty CNC like you. All right. Well, uh, that's about it. Thanks for coming on, guys. Uh, we won't keep you any longer. It's been quite a night. You guys gotta go to bed for battle hard, battle hard. Battle hard. Yeah, yeah. Blitz. But practice, right? Woo. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, we have, uh, yeah. We have yeah. an extra hour, so you can sleep in a little bit. Yeah. 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 Oh, oh. Right. We we do. Hey, yeah. 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 That's yeah. why they played the this like, <laughs> It'll turn to one yeah, hour. We can play. We can play test with Chris for an extra hour. Oh great. All right. Thanks All right. For Thanks for having us. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah.